we are going to talk today onwards. Uh, we will be talking about the various trauma, various trauma in lower limb. I believe Dr. Onsuman has taken classes for the upper limb trauma. Yes or no? Abdul? Oh, silent. Hai na? Hello. So we had already uh, but uh, this uh, subject for upper limb fractures and traumas are being covered by Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Dotta. Today onwards, I'll be talking on basically on fracture uh, involving in the limb. So to start with this uh, most important thing in the lower limb fracture is the fracture neck femur. Fixer neck femur is a very common problem in orthopedics. Take a photograph also. Uh, important trauma is an important subject in the orthopedics. And you will be surprised to know the other name of this uh, fracture is called Ansel fracture. Ansel, this word has been coined long back by a very famous surgeon. But still, then it is yet Ansel means so many development has taken place so many things has happened in this medical fraternity so many new invention is being added so many modification is being needed but even today also we are facing the same problem of non-union facing problem of avian particularly avascular neck process of the head this problem still mounting even though we have advanced in many sectors, better understanding of the biomechanics, better understanding of the operative techniques, newer and newer additions to the armamentarium of the fixation of the orthopedics, even then the solutions is still far away to give 100% result. Yes, to some extent we could able to do the control, but yet the problem is not being solved. So, as you know, firstly, you must have some idea about different parts of the upper part of the femur, particularly. So, upper part of the femur, you know, this is the head part, clavicular separate head part, which is important in formations of the hip joint and a ball and socket type of joint. The socket is being formed by the acetabulum of the pelvis, and the head is being contributed by the upper end of the femur. And this part is your this part is your soft part this is called greater trochanter and this is your lesser trochanter and this area is known as trochantic area so this is area is trochantic area means in between the trochanters this area particularly now as trochanter and a part below the lesser trochanter is a part of soft what we say it is subtrochantric area this area, subtrochantric area below. That means this is subtrochantric area, this is lesser trochanter, this is greater trochanter, and this area is known as trochantric zone, trochantric area. Now, neck area is in between these two. Neck area is between these two. Neck area is between these two. So this is head, this is neck, this is a trochantric zone, this part is greater trochanter, this part is lesser trochanter, this is a subtrochanter. So this part should to be always in, in, my, in your mind, what we are going to talk. Now, our concern today is to talk about the problems arising in this area, this area, trochanter, in between the head and the trochanter, the neck area. So we'll be talking about the problem arising in this area, the neck, the head, neck, greater trochanter, Lesser trochanter, trochanteric zone, it is trochanteric zone, and your subtrochanteric zone. So, this is your basic anatomy. So as I said, say this is your ball and socket type of joint, and part of the head is here. This being shown, what are the various anatomical landmarks over here? This is the ligamentum teres, cut here, ligamentum teres, the shown. This is the acetabulum. And here are the various capsules, sub, uh, your synovial membranes, and also various ligaments. And this is here you have these ligaments which is cut to open up the joint. 
we are showing the, the various component. One is this acetabulum, another is a head, this part is neck, this part is trochanteric zone, subtrochanteric zone. Here are the various layers which is covering this uh, 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 joint, mostly the synovial membrane, then is capsules, then various ligaments, there's a whole in position. So, and one thing you know, there are two things I would like to tell you. Two things I would like to tell you that here you will see the neck is not straight one. If you are coming back to this again, the former one, that this neck is a making an angle with this long axis of this femur. So, this neck is not a straight neck. They are making an angle. A angle, it is there from here. If you draw the line like this from the center of the head, another line, if you are drawing from the subtube, they are making an angle of around 130 degree, 135 degree, 125 degree variable. But more or less, it is around 135 degree. So, this is another name is called caput column diaphyseal angle, CCD or Next septal angle, one simple word. Neck septal angle. This is neck septal angle is very important. And whatever you are going to do, we cannot forget about the normal anatomical axis. This is one. This is one one thing. This is neck is being formed. They are making an angle of 130 degree with a neck step of CCD, the foot column, the facial angle. So another angle we are going to talk, it is antiversion. You try to understand what is the antiversion. So if you do have the femur with you, and if you keep this femur on your table, femur on your table, lying the contact, just, just as if a normal table, you are keeping it, then you will find the head is not touching the, head is not touching the table. It is lying a bit high. That means, it is not in the same axis of the femur. If you find, you'll find what I am showing here in finger, you find that this is the angle, it is called CCD or head, neck, sub angle. Now, this is already we told you, this is 135 degree. Now, if this angle is like this, this is not in the same plane, actually, it is like this. This is called antiversion. This plane. This is called antiversion. That means this head and neck is not in the subplane. I am showing this again. See, this is your head and neck angle. This is head, this is neck, and this is your sub. This is around 135 degree. Now I said that there's another thing is there that the head is not in the actually in the same plane. Rather, it is a bit anterior. It is lying evidently. So while you are keeping the femur on your table, you will find the head is lying, not touching the uh, table, but it is lying a bit high, a bit high. It is not plain. This is called antiversion. This angle is called facing forward. That means the head is facing forward. This is called antiversion. And usually this angle is around 10 to 15 degrees. Angle is 10 to 15 degrees. So this is called antiversion. And what we have already discussed, the other angle is CCD or neck sub angle is around 135 degrees. Few things are very important in the neck part. That the circulation is very precarious. It's important thing you have to understand that why you say that it is a non solve unsolved fracture. Why? Because of the blood supply. See, important thing you have to understand here that these vessels which are coming, one is in the front, another is in the back. These are, this is a circumflex artery. Actually, the femoral artery, they give a run profundus. From the profundus in the upper part, you will have one circumflex artery entirely, another is posterior circumflex artery. Again, the circumflex artery usually have three branches. One is ascending branch, under the transverse branch, and then descending branch. So you will find this is your profunda. Okay? This is your femur, femur artery. 
So in the profunda, they are giving two branches in view. One is called anterior circumflex femoral artery, and another which is going backward is called posterior circumflex femoral artery. Again, in this femoral circumflex femoral artery, they are dividing into anteriorly or superiorly ascending branch. This is called transverse branch. This is called descending branch. This ten branch branch is again connecting with the other to form this anastomosis posteriorly. This is also going downwards to form some anastomosis. We will not talk about that. But what we enter important is the ascending branch of this body artery. This is a very important thing. They are circular and they, they are forming a ring at the basal part of the neck. See, it is area outside. And from there, they are sending their vessels towards the head. See, towards the head, towards the head, towards the head, towards the head, towards the head. And initially, these vessels are superficial, initially. Then if you go towards the head, it will go deeper and deeper, become intraosseous. Intraosseous, better understand here. So this thing is much better for you, see. I already mentioned about the ascending branch. I also mentioned about the transverse branch. I also mentioned about the descending branch. And same thing is happening to the medial circumflex femoral artery, or this is a lateral circumflex femoral artery. These ascending branch are both together. They are forming a arcuate, a ring, extra, extra capsular artery ring. This from this they are sending perpendicular branch towards the neck, then towards the head. See, initially the vessels are superficial, but up to some extent they will pierce into the bone. Then they go inside the bone to supply this here. So they become intraosseous here. Here they are almost extraosseous. Extra osseous outside the bone. But since it is going more medially, they used to penetrate inside the bone, they become intraosseous. On the other hand, in this in ligamentum trees, another vessel is coming from the obturator artery. This is called fovial artery. They are giving a contribution here. That means there are two network of vessels. One is from the lateral side, another is from the medial side. And they are going, but their contribution from this is very less. But greater contribution is always from this area. Now just remember, just think the problem what the learnings. So if the fracture injury is taking place here in this area, mind it, in this area, then you'll find some vessel may escape. Why? They are not yet intraosseous. The chances of recovery in this area is more. Why? Because most of the vessels are still outside this bone. But if you go deeper, you will find they become intraosseous. It becomes inside the bone. So once there is a fracture here, there's this possibility of injury of vessels is always high. Now that is why, that is why you will find more you are nearer to the head, the chances of non-union and other problems are more. More you are away from towards the base, the chances of recovery is better. Why? More you will go to the head towards the side, almost all the vessels are intraosseous inside the bone. So if there is a fracture here, necessarily the vessel gets tenaced. On the other hand, if the injury is towards the base side, so the chances of escaping some vessels will be a bit high. And middle part is the halfway in between. That means some will be outside, some out will be inside. But here, most of the SR are intraosseous. So if there is a fracture here, this area will be not getting very blood. Only this supply is enough. So that is one. So that's it. That what extra extra capsular arterial ring located at the base I have shown you. The ascending branches 
from both these vessels going upward and they become and the vessels which are going these are called retinacular vessel why this called retinacular vessel i will tell you any another thing here i should tell you that this part is a another thing is there important thing that here there is no periosteum as i said already this is unsolved fracture another problem is as already discussed the chances of injury to the vessels are more so the chances of recovery chances less if it is towards the towards the head on the other hand you will find another thing is happening that this area is devoid of ab classical periosteum normally you do have a periosteum all around the bone long bone this periosteum is very important that because of healing process they lay down the osteoblastic cell and very important for union of the bone but if you go if you go if you go to this neck another problem we will find that you do not have this periosteum here here you see that there is a capsular layer here capsule the capsule which you will find here will be covered in this part also and the capsule is attaching to the intertrochanteric line anteriorly but posteriorly they are short they are half in shorter than that of your anterior capsule is attached here anteriorly but posteriorly it will be shorter than this so a part will be there in between so if the fracture is there in between the partially it will be intercapsular partially it will be extra capsular and if it is happening to the outside the capsule we say it is extra capsular but now what is more interesting there this part is again not having a classical periosteum this capsule which is attached here they used to reflect back again towards the neck the capsule which is attached here they used to reflect back again on the neck this part is known as retina coulomb retina coulomb is must have seen this is retina coulomb the flexor retina coulomb extensor retina coulomb ankle joint disc what is the meaning of retina coulomb retina coulomb means retention they helps in retention retina coulomb means the word implies the retention they help here they help to retention so that is why this periosteum is actually replaced by that retina coulomb and this retina coulomb does not have that characteristics of a classical periosteum of laying down new bones so that is another problem we need so one problem we have discussed about the vascular status one problem we have discussed about the retina coulomb vessels where you will find you do not have this classical periosteum which is normally seen in the other bone that helps in the union process is laying down osteoblastic cell but here you do not find that first thing that is another problem one is vessel problem another is your another is your periosteum problem so this vessel which we are going this person these vessels actually known as retinacular vessels the vessels which are extra capsular ring they are forming from the ring they are going towards the head these are known as the retinacular vessels since they are going along with the retina coulomb initially they are superficial to the retina coulomb then they are going deeper to the retina coulomb then after that you are becoming more deeper becoming intraosseous inside the bone so that is why this is a classical thing problem we are having and that is why you will find you will find interesting thing see this part is not very smooth this part is more smooth because you will find various small small holes they are actually here in the neck you will find in the neck in the bone you see that these holes are basically not uh, basically for the vessels to get enter into the neck part at this area so this part of the neck you will find in your bone that small small holes are there and small small holes are basically the vessels which are big initially retina coulomb initially superficial they are becoming deep inside the bone and become intra osseous intra osseous ah uh, intra osseous so extra capsular artery ring is formed as i said is the most important large vessels of femoral medial femoral circumflex artery 
and purely by the later circumflex femoral these are the two branches more important then the ascending branches are more important they are forming the ring extra capsular ring then they are penetrating it and art artery with, along with the ligamentum teres being contributed by obturator nerve is also obturator artery is important thing so commonly this problem is mostly seen in the elderly problem bones are very well osteoporotic that is why a trivial fall is to lead to this sort of problems more very low incidence in young patients in a high velocity trauma if it happening to the young it is basically because of the impact of the force is being high but in case of elderly and adult and elderly persons a trivial fall because of this osteoporosis that leads to your fractures very easily particularly the elderly persons so make a low energy trauma a direct fall a slip on the in the floor or in the taking their leg into the mattress hmm the floor mat a high energy trauma mostly in this case of young adult where there is rotopic accident is also uh, also important and particularly this word now is coming up called insufficient flexors means bone is not sufficient enough to withstand the normal load normal insult that is why they are failed and that is why they are going insufficient flexor so this point again been capitalized here when highlighted there the absence of the cambium layer that previous time i have mentioned which is not missing being replaced by retina colum flexor heals without external callus another important point because you do not have the periosteum where from this callus will be coming so whatever is coming from the endosteal network on the endosteum on the so peculiar the blood supply i have mentioned intracapsular callus formation will go to vasovasal another important point in flexor neck femur is that as i said this capsule is locked inside and this flexor is the intracapsular flexors so this joint is always butting the synovial fluid is always butting this joint so in a case of your flexor there whatever is being laid so every time it is being washed away by the synovial fluid so any cement work which is going on is also counteracting by the washing problem of the synovial fluid which is always there because secreted by the synovial membrane of the joint intercapsular callus form will get washed away by the synovial fluid the intercapsular humerus following flexor neck femur are causes tamponade effect and obliterate retinal fasciation further decrease this is another point is that we say that since it is intercapsular as it is being covered surrounded by this capsule which is still intact because the flexor is there inside the capsule so that is why once there is a flexor there will be release of blood from it the release of blood will do what there at a time will come this bleeding will be there inside the capsule then that the tension will be mounting inside since there is more accumulation inside the joint so it will be a detrimental effect on the vessels also to lead to your compression of the vessels that also again lead to your geoporation of the circulation that's the interesting thing under point so that is another point where the tampon and this is called tampon and it hey there this point is there that the blood which is coming from here will be also causing inside capsule intercapsular tension high and that also lead to contributions uh, contributions to give exerting pressure over the vessels so thereby it also minimize this circulations whatever left so that is another minus point here the area of femoral head remains viable vascular growth from the distal fragment capillary circulation will so definitely once there is a fracture also the repair the process body has tremendous potentiality of the repair work so they will start repairing work that will go fracture is also in the process just like a trauma any sort of trauma to the soft tissue also there is a healing process start in similar things